Signaterra has the opportunity to revolutionize clinical trial design by better identifying patients most likely to benefit from therapy, especially in the adjuvant setting. A common trial design here would be to only enroll patients with molecular residual disease after surgery and then randomize those patients between an interventional arm versus a placebo arm. Additionally, Signaterra can be used in a novel approach to better identify patients with disease that's destined to relapse. We call this molecular relapse. And molecular relapse, as we know, can happen sometimes months, if not years, before clinical or radiological relapse. By identifying these patients and intervening earlier in their treatment, we can possibly bring novel pharmaceutical agents earlier in a patient's treatment course into the molecular relapse setting. Uh, I think in the context of clinical trials uh, run by pharmaceutical companies or um, in, by academic consortia, um, it's going to have a big impact to, to get uh, new novel treatments to the patients who are actually likely to benefit from them. Signaterra can be used as a biomarker to track therapeutic treatment response. For example, Signaterra can identify how quickly the drug is working to decrease the overall tumor bulk in that patient, and also identify very quickly when the patient is losing treatment response and beginning to progress. Lastly, novel therapeutics frequently are being tested in umbrella or in basket trial designs. Using Signaterra to assess ctDNA changes in these patients can provide early trial readout information and help the pharmaceutical sponsor to better understand when to expand or close some of these cohorts. With a smaller enrollment requirement, and in many cases it'll lead to a, a faster trial as well because uh, if you use also Signaterra as a surrogate endpoint to see if the treatment is working or not, you're going to get a faster readout than you would if you had to wait for clinical radiographic evidence.